Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Coaching Experience Show. I am Coach Keisha. I'm so excited to have you all with me today. And I wanted to share um, my story um, about um, my illness right now. Uh, I'm not going to go into great detail, but I just wanted to share this with you. Um, I would say last week, um, I had been maybe almost last week or week before, I really was not feeling well. And so I decided to um, buy more vitamins, vitamin B, multivitamins, take vitamin D, uh, increase my fluids, drink more water, um, maybe eat a little bit more because I just was feeling so weak and so tired, so weak and so tired. So I, I said, well, I know I, I'm probably eventually going to have to go to the doctor, but I'm going to try this first and let me see how this will work. So I moved forward and just kept working and working on my magazine. And I said, okay, I'll be okay. So last week, so this was last week, I, I worked um, like in yeah, I started to work that Monday, and in the midweek, like in, like Wednesday, um, I was started feeling a little bit more tired again. Then Thursday, I really felt bad, and I was in so much pain, so much pain, and I am so scared right now because I'm wondering why am I getting sick? You know, what's wrong? You know, when you start, your body gives you signs. Your body gives you a signal, okay? Um, so I hold out and I said, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the doctor, but I'll just make an appointment and just, you know, get a full checkup. So... That Friday, I started getting a little bit more, having a little bit more fatigue and feeling nauseous and just didn't want to do anything. So I called my daughter because I started again feeling, it, it just was a feeling that, okay, mm, something's not right. So I get um, on the phone, I call my daughter, I said, look, baby, <laughs> mom is on her way home. As soon as we, as soon as I pull up, be ready, because I'm going to need you to take me to the hospital, to the doctor, because I'm not feeling well. So my first mind was to go to my, to my primary care doctor. So, um... I went, uh, my daughter uh, took me, I went to the doctor, I explained the symptoms, I explained what, um, what was really, you know, uh, what, what was bothering me, it was really bothering me, and I was worried, and I told the doctor, I said, I'm so worried, because um, this is very unusual, so the doctor examined me, um, and immediately, the doctor told me what was going on with me. And um, so she gave me some prescriptions and just told me to take those prescriptions and, you know, I should feel better. So I went straight to the drugstore to pick up my prescriptions. And I started immediately taking them because... When you're that sick, 
you ready for some relief. <laughs> so um, I decided to get some pain relievers because I was in so much pain. So I ended up getting um, Tylenol, some extra, um, extra strength Tylenol for the early release. I said, this will help, okay. So I get home, I take my meds, it's prescribed. Um, the doctor okayed me, of course, to take Tylenol. So I took Tylenol. And I would say, after taking the Tylenol, <laughs> nothing, no more than two hours passed by, I started feeling more pain. This is strange. The Tylenol is not even helping the pain. What is going on? So I said, I'm just going to lay down and I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to rest. So um, Sunday rolls around. The pain is like a level 10 now. And I'm like, oh my God, what is wrong? So I went and, um, you know, drank some water. I went into the kitchen, got some water. Okay, I'm, I think I'm okay. So again, I lay down. Maybe I just need to rest is what I'm thinking. Take some more Tylenol, you know, um, my antibiotic. Just lay down, and the pain just hit me again. And I told my daughter, I said, the Tylenol isn't even working. Um, something's not right. Something's not right. So she said, Mom, you in too much pain. Something's not right. I don't think it is. <laughs> Let me go ahead. I want to take you to the hospital. I said, yes, it is time. So we go to the ER. I let them know I'm having so much pain. Um, and I tried to do whatever, you know, remedy it. And, you know, I went to the urgent care, I, you know, the ER. Um, I am taking the meds prescribed. Um, nothing's getting better. Nothing. I'm not feeling good at all. So they immediately... Once I got in the room, they immediately started, you know, um, getting labs, um, starting fluids, and, you know, run all these tests. Um, when the doctor comes in, he asks me these questions, you know, what's your symptoms? And all of a sudden, I see him go to... Um, go to a cart with all these um, um, what is it y'all like um, oh I can't even think of it but all these tubes and everything in it and he comes and um, you know to my bedside and, and then he says um, you know, the surgeon would not want you to drink or eat anything. He'll get mad at me. And my mind is like, surgeon? Surgery? My daughter looked at me. I looked at her. I'm like, what? What's going on? And so I immediately get on the phone. I call my mom. I'm so scared. My mom, you know, she stayed calm because she didn't want me to get to, you know, if she joined in with my uh, fear, you know. So she said, I'm gonna pray you're going to be okay. You know, just call me. Let me know what they say. So um, I got the phone with my mom and I went ahead and, um, you know, just relax and, you know, be with the, 
doctors ask me to do, you know, relax and, you know, let me know if, if they need any, you know, if I need anything and, you know, run the test, of course. Um, I let them run test on me. Um, and so at the end of um, getting everything, you know, done, the, the test and everything, in the end, God really showed up and everything that I go through, there's a purpose behind it. And I had to truly sit back, sit back, because this is what I do. I like to reflect on every situation. And I ask God, okay, God, what are you trying to show me in this moment? What do I need to do? This is a reason why I went through what I went through today. And so um, I called my mom. I let her know, you know, no surgery was needed at this time. They're treating me with meds um, first. Um, and so my mom said that Right when I had got off the phone with her, she said, you notice I was so calm. She said, um, something just came over me, which was the Holy Spirit, for her to just be calm because she knew everything was going to be all right because God had me. And so she said, right when she prayed, she felt the peace come over her. And I told her, I said, Mommy, your prayers work because... I was I was just waiting to go into surgery and I'm scared because anytime you use surgery, you know, most people don't have the good thoughts and say, oh, you know, I'm having surgery and this is going to relieve. No, your thoughts is what's going to happen. I ain't never had surgery before. So everything, all these things are running around in my mind, all these thoughts. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, who? What is really going on with me and my body? Why am I needing surgery? You know, so, and this just happened so, like, out of the blue um, that I got sick like that. I'm just like, why? You know, how did this happen? Um, even they asked me, the doctors, you know, the nurses say, have you had this before? And I'm like, this is just not, you know. And so this is why I always reflect that and talk to my father and say, God, what is it that you need me to talk about or do? Is it, is it for um, a testimony? And, you know, me, I everything to me that God does is a testimony. You know, he always uses me for something. And, and, I'm, and, I, and I'm happy that he does that because... I want other people to be aware. So it can be a preventive measure or know what to do after the fact or in the midst, right? So I um, wanted to share this with you and I'm going to tell you the why. Because things can happen so suddenly and you don't even have time because, you you know, even have time to prepare. You don't have time because you didn't know, you didn't see it coming. You may feel like something may be wrong, but you don't know the full extent. So this is why I named the show Normal Watching. You know, we sit back and watch ourselves and we notice our changes we notice um what's you know what we're feeling you know isn't right or we know when our body is telling us something we need to act on it because I didn't, I didn't even know what 
what was happening to me. I was so scared that it prompted me to think, oh my God, I need to go ahead and make out my will. I need to make sure my life insurance uh, is up to date. Do I need to add? I mean, it just prompted me to think all these things because I'm a single mom. I have children. And if something happened to me, you know, where are they going to go? You know, what? You know, they have, you know, their dad, they have their grandparents, but I want to make sure they're taken care of. So no more watching. We need to make sure that we're putting at putting in the action because we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow. We don't know. That's why God wants us to worry about today. No more watching. Today, now is the time that you get a checker. Now is the time to walk in your purpose. Now is the time to tell your story. Now is the time to move. It's time to move. No more watching. We sit back and we watch other people move into their purpose or their moving in their purpose and we see people doing, doing, doing and some people some of us look at these people and we say you know why is this happening for them why, you know, I, you know, I know I have talent. I know God has a plan for me. What do I do? No more watching. No more wondering. It's time to start asking God to help you. It's time to open our mouths and ask God to give us the resources. And we must be patient because when he gives us something, he, 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 he goes beyond our understanding. He goes way beyond our understanding. So we must be patient, but we have to act. It's no more sitting on the sideline watching all the other players play. And it's okay not to know what to do. This is why we have what? A coach. This is why we have physicians. We have specialties such as orthopedics, neurosurgeon, whatever it is that you need help with. God blessed others to become, you know, specialists, specializing to help. Mental health is a big thing. Mental health, when I saw myself getting to the point where, you know, getting to that, that, that point where I just didn't even want to get up and move and work in my purpose or, you know, do the things God assigned me to do. You know, I didn't feel like serving. I was so tired. There was a reason. So guess what I did? I hired a coach. I went to therapy. Still do. Counseling. We can't, we can no longer worry about what someone else is 
you know, what, what someone else is thinking about us. You know, years and years ago, there were, and you know, I, I'm an eighties baby. So, you know, I grew up with grandparents that would say, you know, leave that baby alone. Ain't nothing wrong with that baby. You don't need to put that baby on medicine. You know, you know, they give you these <laughs> home remedies or, you know, it's nothing wrong, you know, but we, <laughs> you know, we can't, we, that was the old way. We, we have to, we have to do the things that God needs us to do. We need to do it God's way. If we know we need help mentally, emotionally, or even physically, we need to seek that help so that we can get well to do his work. So no more watching. So God has really been moving and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I really didn't know at first how to put it together. And I say, God, I'm just going to go. <laughs> I'm just going to go. And for those who are pastors, preachers, ministers, coaches, teachers, leaders, we can no longer do the watching. And, and let me give you, for, you know, give you an example. For example, we see individuals not getting the help they need. We see people that's suffering from church hurt. We see people just in pain. When we sit back, we just watching, you know, for those who say, look at, you know, I have done it too. With, you know, I go, look at them. I don't know why they doing this. Why aren't they doing this? Or look at them, what they doing? They may not have guidance. So as ministers, prophets, preachers, teachers, leaders, we need to be the one to make changes, to show the action. It's time to go out to our communities, advocate, talk to people, and really truly do some research and get more hands on with individuals to see to, to make to, to, to see a change, we have to help make a change. Because some people are misguided or just don't know what to do. No more watching. No more watching. We have individuals that so church hurt. We have so many indiv individuals that's getting into marriages and it doesn't last for a second. Or they stay in these bad marriages. They stay in their abuse. Because. Some are lost. With the church hurt. 
There are so many individuals that has been hurt by the people in the church. It's not the church. It's not the building. It's the people that's in the building that spread these toxins. So we have to be the example. For instance, I formed a sisterhood community called Learn Her. And when I formed it, I made sure I, I had God's approval, number one, and I asked for his direction on this. And I looked at my experience because I, I took my experience that that was one reason, you know, the idea was formulated because God showed me all these experiences with sisterhood, all the things that I had been through with, with individuals and how I was treated while being in this sisterhood. And I said, there is no more watching how individuals are being treated in these toxic spaces. So guess what I did? I made a move and I created Learn Her. Learn Her is now in motion. Um, I wrote the plan. I wrote the vision. I made it plain. I created the group. I invited the people. And now I got to move and see, okay, this is, you know, I'm going to need this. Okay, I'm going to need that. Okay, God. Then he started bringing other people, you know, into my life that's going to help me with the group because you're going to need help. You can't do it by yourself. So I wanted to see a change in how a true, true sisterhood should be, how it, how, how it should flow. So I created with God's help a space. So I said, no more watching. I got to go out here and do. So thank y'all so much for joining me. Um, last um, week, I talked about breaking the silence, abuse. It is a series I'm working on. I gave an introduction, um, you know, again, the abuse um, last week. So stay tuned. I got more for you. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so much. And I will see you next week. Bye.